Eye, and welcome to Third Eye and Thinkers. I'm your host, Megan Benanti. And I'm Michelle Welch. And today we're going to talk about protection and how to help your how to help protect yourself in the spirit world and when you're connecting with your guides. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about topics, actually, mm-hmm. and there are so many to choose from. So we kind of started talking about the things that come up most with clients or actually clients and also in my store, Soultopia. Yeah. So I was mentioning to you, actually, Megan, that probably one of the biggest uh, questions we get in Soultopia, literally, I'd say many times a day, is the question about how to protect um, against certain things uh, in the spirit world. So maybe we should start just explaining a little bit about what we mean by protection. Okay. Well, to me, one of the big things with protection is going to be just having good, healthy boundaries. And uh, in general, you know, I sort of set myself up um, energetically on a daily basis so that I don't have um, a lot of the anything kind of broken down. Um, But there's a lot of traditional methods that you can do to help protect yourself. And we'll talk about some of those. Um, Do you have like a basic regime you do in the morning or during the day that help you to kind of protect? I do. Well, let me say this. I've gone through a myriad of of different routines. Mm -hmm. Um, I so the answer is yes, but it's evolved. Okay, good. So uh, I've done everything which I will talk about, but from, you know, putting protection around myself of a bubble or a hedge of protection or, you know, a lot of visualization to I've come around and and using a bunch of tools because I've said before I like using different tools such as crystals and things like that. But uh, and then I've kind of come to the to the conclusion that I also believe in just raising my vibration Mm-hmm. Um, and the light that I have as much as I can and I, because I believe that love and light will overcome anything that's coming at me. Yeah. But we'll talk about that too and I'd like to get into that as soon as possible because we've talked about that a lot this week, how sometimes there are things that come out at us, especially when we're doing this type of work or, you know, or anybody, you know, when, when we're dealing with any anything Um, I always pick on certain stores, but when we're going in stores or I'll use even a pawn shop, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll send a lot of my students to pawn shops to practice, you know, holding things or touching things where you feel a lot of energy. And it's a lot of um, uh, discouraging or maybe desperate energy sometimes because people are getting rid of things because they need money. And so they may pick up on uh, on certain energy Um, and they may not even know why. So a lot of times that's a great place to learn to protect uh, your energy um, is is, is going in those places. For one thing, I think that what we don't always realize is that we are always in each other's auric fields. Like right now, we are in each other's auric. Our our heart fields are in connection and probably our brains. Okay, but heart auric fields go out really far. And depending on the person, they go out like the Dalai Lama, as I've said, they go, he's, his goes out really far, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and our brain auras go out very far. So when people think, oh, I'm, I don't want to hug somebody because I might get in their space, well, we're already in their space because we're in each other's auric fields. So to answer your question, yes, I do protect sometimes, and I say prayers of protection and call on Archangel Michael for protection, but sometimes I forget. And when I forget, Sometimes I realize I forgot. <laughs> How about you? Well, I, you know, I think I'd start off my, my day and my life so energetically high that mm. it's, um, you know, I don't have to get into specific prayers all the time. Um, although it is kind of interesting because coincidentally, I live right down the street from St. Michael's Drive. And um, one of my Catholic neighbors was saying, she said, part of the reason I loved living here is because St. Michael is right down the road. (laughs) And, um, but yeah, just because I'm working at such a high level, I, you know, I generally don't just draw in things that I don't want around me. And I recently in the last few weeks have had some experiences and, um, and I was like, holy cow, my protection was completely violated. And I had to figure out 
how do I deal with that? And um, who do I talk to about it? Because when you're dealing with uh, spirituality and people's energetic vibrations, that's not something that everybody's open to. And especially when you're talking about things like dark energy, um, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, who am I going to tell? And um, because you don't want to have people pass judgment, you don't want to feel like a failure because you can't manage this on your own. And so um, that was kind of a new experience for me. Um, Before we get into the stories, though, do you want to talk about what the tools that we brought this week? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I brought uh, for me the it's again, there's so many crystals every week. I will say this. There's crystals for uh, you have to kind of work with the crystals and touch the crystals and hold them yourself. But there's always some go to crystals for the major topics and definitely for protection. There's a go to crystal and it's called black tourmaline. And I believe we have a graphic of that to show for those of you that are watching, but I will describe it for those of you that are just listening. It is a black. Now, tourmaline comes in different colors, uh, but so when it's black tourmaline, it's called shorl. It's S-C-H-O-R-L. If it's in different colors, they have a different name for it, but we just call it black tourmaline, you know, Mm -hmm. to not be all fancy about it. And... uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful crystal. It comes in a, tum- a tumbled form, too. And I use the word crystal loosely, okay? Mm-hmm. Crystal stone, that's a, like a class, okay? We won't get into all that. But uh, it, the great thing about black tourmaline is not only does it ward off negativity, it actually will absorb it and deflect it. So deflect it and absorb it, either one. So I recommend putting it at your front door, putting it in an office, if uh, there's some unpleasantness in an office, putting it at the front door of your home, wearing it. Uh, I have it on my ring. I usually wear it, um, you know, maybe on a pendant. Here's a pendant that's set in sterling silver that with a labradorite on top. Yeah, I usually wear it um, in bracelets. Uh, energy doesn't disappear. So that's what energy you can get it to go somewhere but it's always going to go somewhere else right so it's funny to me when i see healers snapping their fingers they'll snap their fingers like like they're snapping energy onto the floor when they're clearing Mm -hmm. you or they're like brushing their hands like they're clearing it and first of all i think that's kind of rude when they do that to me i'm like like what i'm that bad you know so i don't and and no offense to those who do that I, i recognize that's a a method and process that's taught but have you have you ever seen they'll snap their fingers yep. and they, well what i think they're doing and i don't know what they're doing in their head so i can't judge what they're doing but they're snapping energy onto the floor unless they're sending it somewhere so uh black tourmaline will take that and recycle it for good so will gaia the mother earth will recycle that energy for good or if you send it to the light but when you're just snapping your fingers you know you're sending it to the floor because energy goes somewhere Right. right. Well, and energetically, they're probably sending it back to they probably Mother are. Earth. If they so. probably are, unless they're just snapping their fingers. So, <laughs> and no judgment. I just think it's funny. I don't, you know, I want to always go, where are you sending that energy? <laughs> that is so, funny. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting. But black tourmaline is a perfect one to um, deflect, absorb, transmute the energy. Perfect. Well, and I brought in uh, mugwort today. and. Love it. Um, yeah, so that's up on the screen, and this is the herbal form, um, which is also on the, the left side on the screen. And um, mugwort, the Latin term's Artemisia vulgaris. And so a lot of, here in Texas, we can grow Artemisia in our yard quite easily. I don't actually have any mugwort growing, um, and I, I haven't seen it in the nursery, so I don't know if our, our soil in Dallas is con- complementary to it or not. Um, but it's basically, it is the the go-to herb and I mean they use it in in Harry Potter so um but it's kind of a rock star of magical herbs it's been around for ages and ages um it was originally uh referred to as Una which was the mother of all herbs um and then if you think about Artemisia that also connects with um Artemis the goddess of the hunt And um, so she was also the goddess of the moon, the daughter of Zeus, uh, a maiden, and so, um, and very untied to men uh, in that regard, so very freeing. So uh, mugwort is going to bring about strength, uh, 
psychic powers, protection. Um, it's really good for prophetic dreams or um, people that are into astral projection. Um, and you can use it as a tonic or a tea. It can also be, um, uh, apparently, as I was looking online, I guess people smoke it as a hallucinogen. I, I have a friend who does. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I'd say, uh, give a little disclaimer there, warning, to oh, be okay. very, very careful with that. Yeah. Well, anytime you're inhaling yeah. anything, yeah. I think you probably need to be careful. Um, uh, what else do we know about it? Um, oh, it can create body heat. Like, it's got a warming effect to it. Um, oh, so that's what's going on. That's what we're having. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we I was having a warming <laughs> moment. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Never happens to older women at all. Not at all. It's got to um, be the mugwort. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's been used both in Chinese history and in um, and in European history to uh, as warding off properties as a healing modality um, connects with uh, like uh, digestion issues and things like that as well. So it's been around for ages. Um, and a couple other plants that I was looking at when I was researching this was uh, mistletoe came up. Um, that's an old druid herb that is uh, good for protection. Um, and we have plenty of mistletoe that grows naturally around here. Um, hydrangea, if you want a flower, is going to build protection. And so that's all often used in borders. Um, and then foxglove, which promotes um, uh, courage. And so that's going to help balance out your chakra and create protection there. Um, so different things you can kind of add to your garden or add to your herbs at home. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about mugwort, so like they also call it St. John's girdle. And uh, because it was believed that when St. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness, he wore it as a girdle for protection, for um, to connect psychically with God and um, uh, to feel safe. So. All right. Yeah, yeah, so kind of cool. It smells really good. Yeah, it does. I, I got a big whiff of this. So yeah. um, Michelle brought this from her store at Soltopia. So she carries it there along with um, the stones that we brought yeah. in. So. so when you burn it, it actually smells it smells really good. And I have had it um, in tea, mm -hmm. again, used sparingly, uh, very sparingly. But it will, uh, It's. I'm so glad I was excited when you set, chose this one because it does protect during those psychic uh, journeys. Right. So for readers and people who connect intuitively or anyone in the audience, just use it very sparingly. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. But I, I love it. Yeah. Good. It smells really good. Um, so the black tourmaline with the mugwort would be great things for protection. I wanted to mention too that uh, Roger in our store, that's my husband, one of our most popular things and I, I i don't always want to do plugs for everything in the store but i will say we cannot keep it in stock and i'm going to show you guys it is this um we have this really cool thing if you don't mind just really quickly um it's it's called our essence bar and he will put oils and crystals uh just to very, fill it up a little bottle or a big bottle only maybe not even a quarter of the way okay maybe a fifth of the way mm -hmm. sixth of the way up and um then you will go and choose a crystal infused water, distilled water that's been out in the moon or charged in the moon or the sunlight or, and you will fill it up with that crystal infused water. So uh, you can do black tourmaline, you could use rose quartz, uh, oh, shungite, neat. whatever it is you mm -hmm. are healing like malachite. But a lot of people will use for the sage smudge, which this is it and protection mist. Ah. Um, they'll do it. And he puts dragon's blood in this too, that one of the herbs that he uses mm -hmm. and so it smells really really good and so this is probably one of the most popular ones and literally we, we gripe at him all the time We're like where's the i mean we could have sold 10 of these if you've been in the store and people actually wear it as perfume and cologne because it smells so good uh so it's a great one because a lot of times we forget to put things in our car Yep. We forget that we're in our car all the time, so much, depending on where you live. But in, in Dallas, in our area, if you're in California, <laughs> you know, you're in the car so much, right. we forget to put protection in our car. Yep. You know, to put crystals or some sort of spray. So it's really good. And well, and I, I actually always keep a few crystals in my car just yep. to have something to hold. If I'm stuck in a traffic jam, it just like, 
de-stress. You know, because you know, another thing um, for clearing and for protection is, you mm-hmm. know, to clear your home or to clear your air- work area. And I know that um, some real estate agents have told me that more and more apartment complexes and those type of places, or if you're leasing, we'll put in the leases now that you can't sage or burn, you know, candles, or you can't sage or you can't burn incense. And so using sprays and crystals are a good thing to do yeah. for, for that protection or for that clearing. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah, because apparently they're adding that to a lot of the, the lease agreements now. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I had a, I had a old roommate, she had mentioned her apartment had burned, but, and then like a few years later, it had kind of dropped it that, oh, it was her that had accidentally burned it, <laughs> leaving the, the candles yeah. lit. Yeah. <laughs> we so. had that kind of in our in our store. One of the, the girls who's a, a massage therapist, we, we're not supposed to have candles. And mm-hmm. accidentally, you know, fortunately, you know, about an hour later, we went in. We're like, what are these candles? But, you know, got them yeah. out really quickly. No yeah. more candles in the store. So, yeah, it's tempting, yeah. though. So why the need, really? We don't want to put fear in people. No. But the thing is, is that anybody who's lived long enough knows that there's dua- duality yeah. in the world, okay? Um, you can call it different vibrations. You can call it different frequencies. Um, but when there's light, there's dark. When there's up, there's down. Yeah. Right? You have to so, have both. All right. So what would you say about protection but not giving into fear well there's a fine line there and I I do feel like people reach out um, when I get readings a lot of times they've had a reading and somebody's told them there's like a curse on them that causes fear Um, and um, you know to me that's a that's a a real disservice to do to someone Um, but there are things that people can do to protect themselves. Um, and I always think of a, a sheet of white light being moving up over them and clearing that off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I guess, you know, as we talk about protection, we're probably also talking about some of these clearing methods. Yeah, they kind um, of go yeah. hand in hand a little bit. Um, uh, so, you know, people, you can kind of protect yourself before you go out in the world. Part of it is you need to know where you're at. Like, what are you inviting in? Um, If you're feeling needy, and we all go through those spells where we feel super needy, Mm -hmm. um, that means you're probably going to be asking, your body, your energy is asking for for help. And so anything can come into that when you're you're in that state. Um, So, you know, and psychologically, you know, if you're, even if you're in a relationship, if there is a void, um you're going to be drawn to whatever it is you're trying needs to be filled and so um you know spiritually psychologically you have to be aware of that i would say that for me you know it's interesting because you'll always say when you're reading we don't want to drink um Mm -hmm. and i think one of the reasons is there's no judgment in someone who I don't place judgment on people. I try. Well, that's not true. I think we all judge at some point. I try not to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting when we say that. One of the re- reasons we don't do that is because we don't want to open ourselves up to anything untoward, anything that we don't want coming into our auric field, into our space. Right. And so the same would go, as you were mentioning, if we're feeling vulnerable, uh, you know, anytime you are using alcohol or any type of drug or you're feeling vulnerable in any way and actually I'll also mention um, I just did a healing on someone not too long ago when she had felt really um, just kind of under attack since she had had surgery and when you go under uh, there's a lot of literature on this and I don't have to quote right now but um, just I'll just say globally there's a lot of literature on this when you mm-hmm. go under you're not really in control of your subconscious at that point. Okay, so you're under. And um, so at that point, you could potentially be open to oh, yeah. their thought about it. Yeah, wow. so even before yep. you go under, you should really um, protect, I would say. You know, and if you don't, if that doesn't resonate with you, that's fine, but it's something to think about. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Yeah, because you're just, you're completely under. Oh. And so, and maybe get a healing not just for what you had the surgery for, but just to get a clearing afterwards and a healing for that. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, to clearing that out. But I would say that um, I know personally that I do believe in different vibrations, different frequencies, things that aren't necessarily in alignment with where I'm at. And I know it. Um, people can be Pollyannas and say, oh, everything's perfect and everything's of the light and nothing can bother you. And I know from personal experience in my life that that is not true, um, that there are things that can. Uh, I, I just have lived it, so I know. Yeah. Uh, you know, does that uh, mean everybody's going to go through that? No. Uh, did I invite some of that unintentionally in my life and through some of the things that I went through in my life? Uh, yes, I did. Some of it Im- invited, some of it maybe not. Right. But I did. I went through some pretty um, horrific, I would say low vibration times, for lack of a better word, yeah. where I probably could have used a lot of these things we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, ways to protect. You know, another way they say is uh, to put a bubble of protection around you. The, these visualization methods of like you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could do it like, you know, in Wicked, when the Glinda the Good in the play, she yeah. comes down in the bubble. And so That's people true. will say, put the bubble around yourself. Um, your light can go out to others, but nothing can penetrate that bubble or that shield or that hedge of protection it's interesting because even in the bible it talks about put a hedge of protection around yourself there's also uh in the bible it talks about uh put on the armor of god and it goes through all the different pieces of armor that you can put on to protect yourself you know it also cracks me up a little bit Mm -hmm. when people are talking about um calling on michael because when you call on michael you're calling on a mighty archangel. He has legions of angels with him. So when, when you're calling on Michael, you're going to be highly protected if you really realize who you're calling on. He right. is, uh, he comes with like a force, of, uh, an army of angels. So if you really can visualize that, that's a lot of protection too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have to admit, I was more of the Pollyanna theme um, because I've had bad things happen in my life, but I really cracked it up to it's bad things happen to good people, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's part of how how we roll. Um, I don't necessarily always think that, you know, it's been completely karmic or energetically. I I failed somewhere. Um, And so, you know, just with my recent experience, I had um, a person come in that was uh, an extremely powerful person. dark energy and um and I was I I was kind of blown away um at first you know I was I my first reaction is like oh this person's crazy and then um it was like oh no this is like real Mm -hmm. (laughs) and energetically I could see that and I could feel that presence and um uh and very very intelligent person though extremely intelligent and that fascinates me i have a thing for intellect and um because we are we're you know we always want to learn we always want to grow and i was like whoa this is like star wars now i get how they get seduced by the dark side kind of thing um which to me in the movie was never really clear but i also um energetically like when I read a book and I read about the bad guy I usually never see them as that dark and then they make the movie of the book and I was like oh I don't understand why they made them so dark Mm -hmm. I just don't go there anymore and you know I had my time in that space where I was you know I had to work at a lower vibration but I was a fighter and I always fought to get out of that Mm -hmm. and um So this was a a tough situation for me, but I I did feel like this person eventually was really violating my my psychic privacy and my space. And um, so I, you know, I had to do a clear cutoff um, with him as well as energetically. And so um, I did a traditional sage burning, which I haven't done in a long time. and cleared the energy with the smoke from that. I also went in and um, a lesson that I recently learned from um, Jennifer Waltz, who's a healer here in Dallas, um, she has you lay down and imagine that you and the other person are facing each other and that there's cords in between you and that you cut the cords. And Mm -hmm. she said, you know, it can be a sword, scissors, knife, whatever works for you. 
And so that was something that was extremely powerful for me mm-hmm. was to cut all of those cords because they were almost like roots in my mind. Right. And um, so, and then I, I progressively, I felt everything go away. I also followed up with a lot of intense prayers asking for my angels and guides, which had kind of felt really small in this person's presence. And all of a sudden they felt huge and massive. And I really, I feel this sense of a, an, an army of white light behind me now. And that's like taken me to a whole new level of confidence um, in my reading ability, in connecting with other people's reading abilities. And I was like, that was my lesson in meeting mm-hmm. this person was to bring myself to a higher vibration um, but sometimes I had to realize how how dark that it can go sometimes. So, yeah. And for me, uh, briefly, I would say the thing that's happened to me recently mm-hmm. was after the show, or uh, our recording um, yeah. last week, I found myself in the ER. And so I had broke, violated actually one of my own rules, just inadvertently. I had... Um, and this is actually for those of you who work with others and do uh, healings or even readings or, or even just are friends with people and you, mm-hmm. and you listen to everything they have to say and you take it on. Um, I had uh, out in my store, I had, there was a precious, precious person. This is, this is really about me, not about the person because it was nothing that they did wrong, but I uh, felt them and I, I, their energy was very low and not feeling well and I uh, do healings and I usually do them in my office and I just immediately went and got some things to heal this person out in the store and just said and the, the store was crowded and I said just do you mind if I just do a quick quick clearing on you and it involved this person's kidneys and so it was a couple weeks ago and then of course I ended up with kidney stones two weeks later and so what I didn't do was I, I put no protection and I took on And it may sound very bizarre to people, but anybody who's done this type of work knows you can, this can happen. I transferred that to myself and I know that's what happened to me. And I'm still working on clearing that because it was that strong. Um, Actually, when I went back into the store, uh, the day I went back into the store, he was actually there again. And again, he's a wonderful person. I usually don't uh, you know, not saying who this person is or anything like that. A right. wonderful, wonderful per- person. But I took that on. So I didn't put up those protective, like you started off at the top of the show saying it's about boundaries. Yeah. And making sure you know your boundaries, making sure you know where you're at at that time. Are you checking in with yourself and making sure you are okay and you're strong and what you can handle? And are you keeping to your boundaries yeah you know well and even if you're not healing someone else um but you're going into your day you're going into into the workspace exactly you know on a date with someone new um you know boundaries are going to be something that are really important to have um and part of growing up is learning to develop those in your 20s you do a lot of those oops i'm not doing that again Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of that is from not having those boundaries there. And so you learn to develop them by basically stumbling and tripping through it. Um, That's the good thing about being old, having wrinkles and (laughs) having boundaries. (laughs) Well, yeah, for learning new boundaries. Right. And that's something, I mean, we always have to reinvent these things. We're always Mm going to end up with mistakes and have to go back over them. Yeah. But fortunately, we have some tools to use and Mm -hmm. some, and, you know, try out different different ways but the biggest thing is to be in touch with yourself in in the in the sense of knowing yourself and what you can handle because some people can handle you know um and i'm going to just say lower vibrations more Mm -hmm. and they're called to be around friends like that um in a sense of to help those people you know you don't want to just say i'm never going to at all in my life be around somebody i'm not going to take their phone call that friend who always i call it vomits on me every time they call i'll warn you (laughs) okay megan i'm calling you and just by the way i'm about to vomit all my problems on you you know that we come call them psychic vampires coming you know just like suck us dry of all our emotional you know i'll say okay i'm really in a bad place i'm about to vomit on you um but you know we kind of we don't want to just 
always cut those people out of our lives right. because they're not always in they're not always doing that mm -hmm. you know it may just be one time that they need someone to talk to but that's when you want to put up that protection yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so do we have time for any uh readings today or question answering it or looks no? like we're about at the end for today okay. but we can look at doing that next week for okay. sure so yeah. well thank you for joining us yes thank you for joining us and keep third eye thinking